So I'm going to take you through the profiles of each of the cardinals who will be in the electoral college after this August's consistory. Uh, the electoral college who will elect the next pope consists of cardinals who have not reached the age of 80. So it'll be interesting time. Maybe one of these cardinals will be the next pope. Maybe there will be another consistory in the future. We don't know. Um, but I suppose it's very interesting now to become familiar with these men who will be the next pope. Anyway, enjoy this. God bless. Take care. Please like and share this video and let me know what you think in the comments. Take care. Bye bye. So we just have a look at the last 20 popes here. So I've just done a list up here of the last 20 popes since 1675. That was the last um, that was the earliest of these popes so that we can just understand the profile, the average age and so forth. So the average age a pope gets elected is 65 and Pope Benedict has been the oldest pope elected in nearly 200 years as far as I can see. I didn't go back too far. Now I know people live longer these days and Pope Francis was elected at 76. We had Pope John the 23rd elected at 77 but generally speaking, generally speaking, popes are elected in their 60s. And another thing to note about who will be the next pope, it generally doesn't be the Secretary of State. So the last we had Pope Pius the Twelfth here, who was elected. He was Secretary of State, but generally speaking, the Secretary of State uh, does not tend to be elected. So we'll see. Uh, interesting time. So I've put together a list of all of the different um, cardinals in the Electoral College, and we're going to go through these. I've co coloured some of them, some of them in red because. Um, you know, they, they work in the Vatican and they have a profile in the church. And generally speaking, it's cardinals who are who are held up, who, are, who have a profile in the church. In the past, it would have been the Archbishop of Milan, the Archbishop of, um, of Venice or uh, somebody in the Vatican. So it would have been usually somebody who is known. So this is an interesting time. So I'm just going to walk you through the profile of each individual cardinals just so that we become familiar with them and uh, you know it's a bit of trivia in a way but it's um, interesting to know who are these pro uh, cardinals and how do we think they will vote in the next conclave. We are now going to look at one of the most interesting uh, cardinals uh, in this uh, list of episodes so far and it's Cardinal José Tolentino de Mendonça. He is Portuguese and he had a meteoric rise from priest, bishop and cardinal under Pope Francis. So I think it's very interesting that we just go through his life. He was he was um he was born on the 15th of December 1965 and he is as far as I'm aware he is 56 years old. So um he will be around on the stage for a very, very long time. Um, in 1998, he graduated with the equivalent of a bachelor's degree in theology from the Portuguese Catholic University. He was ordained a priest for the Diocese of um, Funchal Madeira on the 28th of July 1990. The same year, he published his first book of poems, uh, Os Dias Contalas. The, day, the Counted Days. In 1992, he was awarded a master's degree in Biblical Sciences from the Pontifical Biblical Institute in Rome. And in 2004, he earned a doctorate in Biblical Theology at the Portuguese Catholic University. He fulfilled his pastoral duties first of all as a par at the parish of Nossa Senhora de Livramento in Funchal in 1992 to 1995. Then he was chaplain to the university uh, the Portuguese Catholic University, Universidad Católica Portuguesa, for five years. He next served the parish of St. Isabel in Lisbon and then became rector of the chapel of Nossa Senhora da Bonanza, better known as the Chap uh, Capella Dorato, in 2010. In, um, in August 2021, Mendoza made his vows as a member of the 
of the third order of saint benedict um so he that's that's his title here third order of saint benedict um and just going down here it's quite important that um you know people understand this man's life because he will be pivotal in the coming years de mendoza's assignments following his ordination included academic appointments as a lecturer at the diocesan seminary in funchal rector of the pontifical portuguese college in rome and a lecturer at the portuguese catholic university he was visiting professor at the catholic university of pernambuco in brazil and the pontifical catholic university of rio de janeiro and the jesuit school of philosophy and theology in belo horizonte in lisbon he joined the UCP faculty as an assistant, assistant professor, associate professor. Uh, he, he in the University Catholic Português appointed him vice rector in two thousand and twelve and dean of the Faculty of Theology in two thousand eighteen. During the academic year from two thousand eleven to twelve, he was uh, a Strauss Fellow at the New York Uni University, joining an in international teams of researchers on the theme of religion and public reason. Um, de Mendoza was the first director of the National Secretariat of Pastoral Culture from 2004 to 2014. And um, after attending a meeting with Pope Benedict in the 16th, bringing together a large group of artists in 2009, he said that the Pope's gesture of hospitality was appreciated. Benedict pointed out that within the church, within the Christian space, they have a home, a sort of homeland. In 2011, Benedict appointed him as consultor of the Pontifical Council for Culture. Pope Francis has appointed him to this position in 2016. In 2018, Pope Francis invited uh, Mendoza to preach the Lenten retreat of the Roman Curia. And this is very, very important. Besides the Bible, his comments reference many writers such as Fernando Pessoa, Rolando Bartz, Clarence Lispector, Francois Dolto, Etty Hilsom and Blas Pascal. He commented, sometimes writers are important spiritual masters. He also mentioned that he tells his biblical students that the biblical scholar or priest must see many movies, listen to a lot of music and get in touch with the world, with the arts world. I, I, I agree. These sermons were published under the title Elogio da Sede with a preface by Pope Francis. In January 2020, Mendoza was part of the Scientific Commission for the 700th anniversary of Dante Alighieri's death, organised by the Pontifical Council, Council for Culture. In February 2020, Pope Francis appointed uh, Mendoza as a member of the Pontifical Council for Culture, chaired by Cardinal Gianfranco Ravasi. De Mendoza has been a consultor between 2011 and 2018. In, on the 13th of June 2020, De Mendoza is Laurish de Premio Europeo, uh, Helena Va Vas da Silva, because of ability he shows in spreading beauty and poetry as part of the intangible cultural heritage of Europe and the world. De Mendoza has published numerous collections of essays. I mean, his his... The amount of writings he has is staggering. It's really staggering. Poems and sermons under the name of Jose Tolentino Mendoza. His work addresses the major themes of Christian canon by placing them in dialogue with life. This relationship between Christianity and culture is part at the heart of his writings. As a theologian and a religious thinker, he has sought to discover the spiritual life in places that have not always been looked at, and he has striven to uh, encourage the church to be more relevant and more engaged there. His books have been great successes in Portugal and increasingly translated and published abroad. He has received numerous literary prizes and awards. At the end of June 2018, Pope Francis named Mendoza Vatican Archivist and Librarian of the Holy Roman Church. As of 1st of September, he was appointed him Titular Archbishop of Suava. 
On the 28th of July, Archbishop Manuel Clemente, uh, Cardinal Patriarch of Lisbon, consecrated him a bishop assisted by Cardinal Antonio Marto, Bishop of Leria Fatima and Teodoro da Faria, uh, Bishop Emeritus of Funchal, who has ordained him a priest on July 1990. On October the following year, Pope Francis made him Cardinal Deacon and assigned him the Church of Santi Domenico Esisto in Roma. He was made a member of the Pontifical Council for Culture on the 21st of February 2020. So this is a Pope Francis man completely here. You can see this, uh, a thinker, uh, definitely a very, very interesting character to follow. Um, I haven't read any of his books, so I don't know much about him. I don't know what way he would vote. Is he even papabile? Would he surprise you? Who knows? Definitely somebody to watch. Definitely somebody to watch. Um, a very, very interesting character. Um, I don't know where you could put him, but he, you know, he's, he's, he's a thinker. He's trying to dialogue in this world. He's, he's questioning and, uh, you know, a fascinating, a fascinating character. And uh, yes, and so this is episode number five of Cardinal Profiles, Jose Tolentino de Mendoza. Next Pope, who knows, but he's 56 years old, so that leaves him another 24 years as a Cardinal Elector. So we will see. God bless. Take care. Bye bye.